Hey everyone, Denny here again. Gonna be making a video uh, walking through the uh, fifth bag that I've made, and it's going to be a long-term performance review of this bag, of the materials that were used. It's going to be um, some descriptions of things that I will change for the next one as well, um, and overall where this thing has been seen where. Getting in close with some close-ups as well, hopefully added into the video. So I'm going to be doing this mostly as a talking video, but I will be intersplicing footage throughout. Um, and the final thing I'll say before um, I start the video is just uh, for you folks out there, please make sure to get out and get registered to vote. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and dive into my fifth Make Your Own Gear bag and how it's treated me so far out uh, in the wilderness. Let's dive in. So materials, dimensions, and weight. This is a um, roughly a 40 liter pack. It's actually probably more like 50 with this enormous front mesh pocket here as well as the bottom pocket and side pockets. Um, but the dimensions are roughly um, six inches, five and a half inches wide by 13 inches, um, sorry, five and a half inches deep by 13 inches wide by something kind of like 32 inches tall. Um, the side pockets are right around six inches high uh, as well, which I think is relevant for design uh, and something that I've worked on to make sure I uh, improve. Overall, the uh, pack is constructed, constructed with Light Skin X Pack. It's the 70 denier, so it's um, VX7, LS707, I believe, is actually the uh, thing you would want to look up. It's got a stretchy Lycra mesh front pocket and bottom pockets here, uh, as well as shoulder pockets here, and then I have some uh, flush shoulder pockets that I kind of uh, have never seen done before on packs. I've been doing them regularly now, and I'll talk about those as well. It does have a, um, a, uh, a sort of hard-coated, if you will, sternum strap, um, meaning that uh, you can't adjust it. Uh, you can just tighten it or not. And then the side pockets here are made out of um, some really, really durable cordura. I think it might be a thousand, uh, 100, 100D cordura, I can't really recall. 220D cordura, actually. I think is what it is. Um, the rest of it is mostly just your typical components here. I've been using some different hardware, some stuff that, um, some hooks, for example, here, so I can undo my, um, get to my, my poles more easily on the sides, um, as well as a hook buckle here to hook and then tighten. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise it's, it is a pretty straightforward uh, bag. It's just got um, the main big mesh pocket and bottom pocket, side pockets, and it's just one big compartment. So in terms of its a performance, rather, okay, and also it weighs 13 and a half ounces, I believe, um, recollection serves. Um, so, or is this the 10 and a half ounce one? Okay, 297 grams, which is 10.4, uh, 10.5 ounces. So, yeah, this pack is really, really light. Um, and right now it's just stuffed with a pad and um, a quilt. So, when you take that out, uh, this is a homemade quilt that I've created. And then I've been experimenting with this really weird space foam pad. When you take that out, it's really a very soft material, it's not sturdy at all, there's no frame. Um, it is very much a fabric bag, uh, but as a result of the materials that are used, it's been fairly durable. We'll get to that. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in much closer now and bring you guys down here with me and actually look deeply into the bag. Here we go. Here we are, nice and close into the bag, and so I want to show you guys a little bit about uh, the design here that I've gone with overall. So you can see here's the bottom pocket here, and the sides out of made out of cordura. I want to show you guys a little bit about the wear. So some things that I'll do first off is I haven't actually sewn the inner in here except for at the bottom down here, which you can see. So up here it actually has been able to kind of like move. I have in fact made another pack that has fixed that just by adding um, some stitching right there. Simple fix. Now, these pockets up here I've really enjoyed. I always throw headphones in them, a small thing of sunscreen, some Vaseline if I have blisters, 
Um, just even some uh, trash, they're great for just holding trash. Uh, they definitely don't want to have big objects in them. Small is preferable because they're riding pretty much on top of your shoulders directly. Um, but these top pockets here have really functioned quite great, uh, quite well, and they're also been, they've also been very durable. Um, these shoulder pockets, I have had to fix up some um, zigzag stitching here, which definitely bent the, <laughs> the elastic here a little bit. And that's just from pulling out my camera uh, so much over the use of it. So I just only used one zigzag st stitch and missed a little bit of it like I did here. Um, so as you can see, not the, not the, I'm, this is not perfect at all. And I don't care. <laughs> I want it to work functionally and it has uh, worked really well. Um, as you can see, the X grid itself has received a fair amount of wear. This is VX7, so 7DD um, X pack on the shoulder straps here, and then a mesh uh, inner here. Now, in terms of durability, this mesh has been absolutely fantastic. It's held up great, and so has the X packs on the shoulder straps. So, uh, in terms of using these materials, I definitely would recommend them. This Lycra stretch mesh, it's really, really durable. Uh, it's just, it is surprisingly durable, uh, as well as the VX uh, 70D, and this inside is a 3 8 inch um, foam pad. Some changes that I would make though, which I have done on subsequent packs, has been to make them much, much wider. These are probably a little bit too wide, but um, in comparison, they, this really just rides so much more comfortably. So that extra half an inch um, is, is really a game changer. You can see the difference here. And the side ones are using quarter inch padding and they're still more comfortable than the thicker padding on this side. Just because this narrowness digs in a little bit more on these um, edges sometimes and doesn't distribute the weight nearly as much. So that is a real, um, a real thing. On the front of the pack, there isn't much to talk about. Uh, it's actually held up quite, quite well overall. Um, so, and likewise, the cordura on the sides has held up quite well overall. I've taken this off trail and it's received quite a few scrapes and bruises. However, um, there has been getting some wear here, so you can see. So, the side pockets, yeah, uh, when you rest them on the ground, they, they'll, grab a, um, they'll grab some sticks sometimes, and I'm sure I just yanked something right there. Otherwise, they're doing quite well overall. You can just see, kind of want to show everybody pretty close up what I'm working with here. I've gotten some sap scratches on, scratches on the side, scratches. Uh, nothing going on really down here at all though, so I think it was just that one pocket, um, probably just a mistake. And then also, you know, with the bottom mesh here, you can see some water staining, but that's about it. No holes, basically, at all. I mean, I can't see any. So, surprisingly durable materials um, in that sense. The Lycra mesh and the Cordura, um, I will continue to go with, and it's because I have a lot of it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and same thing here with just a simple zigzag stitch on the cro on the top here um, and this elastic, quite quite sticky overall, and the hardware here too. Uh, I've always worried about pulling out the, um, the cordage here, and so far I've never had an issue. I do, like, really, um, I do uh, reinforce these quite a bit. Same thing that goes with this top stitching here. Um, where you can actually see a little bit of blue leaking out, and that's because on the inner, it's actually a VX21 X pack that's blue. It's been reinforced, and yeah, it's pretty dirty. Uh, that area gets sweaty and gross. So, yeah, definitely has seen quite a bit of wear. So, you can see again at the top here, things look great, no problems whatsoever, really. Uh, just tons of stitching to make sure that that is uh, nice and strong and so far I'm not worried at all about ripping here. But I'm not really worried about ripping at any of the seams, but you'll notice some, some real wear here. Look at this, you can see this sort of delaminating happening here. It's hard to see on camera but it's absolutely abundant in person. It's happening here, it's happening on marks where there are folds that happen naturally, and as well on the, um, the edges here, the seams. And this is natural a little bit too. You can see it on the X-Pack happening a little bit here. This stuff just gets worn a little bit, 
But even so, I would hope that this wouldn't be delaminating nearly as much at these deeper wear spots at the bottom here. Again, it's hard to see just um, from on this camera, but you can absolutely see that there's, there's real wear going on. So with that being said, let's compare it to some other materials quickly. This is a G4 from Gossamer Gear when, before they stopped making them. This is my first ultralight pack and it's enormous, but it's, uh, it's great and it's made out of nylon. Um, and you can see that this nylon, yeah, it's gotten some wear too. But even so, this nylon, which is a cheaper material um, and technically supposedly less durable, still is holding up quite well. And this is maybe like five times cheaper. So from a purely making your own gear perspective, um, I don't know if I'm going to continue using light skin. So yeah, I think that moving forward, while I do have more materials to work with, I think that ultimately something like aerobic 2.2 ounce per square yard is going to be uh, potentially just as a durable as this and a third of the price. Um, so overall, I don't think that the light skin is uh, worth the price, having field tested it a whole bunch. It's just not durable enough, uh, in my opinion, to be worth it. It's already delaminating at the bottom here a little bit. It certainly is not waterproof. Um, and yeah, while it does look cool for sure, and it definitely is slippery, which I like, uh, for especially for um, off-trail stuff, I ultimately don't think it's the you know end of the line when it comes to uh, the at least value um, uh, perspective for materials, making your own gear materials, as well as for uh, just backpacking packs in general. Um, so, some things that I would do differently. Love the side pockets, wouldn't change those a bit at all. Love that I can just pop in and grab them while walking. Uh, I think that I would probably make the shoulder pockets, one of them even a little bit bigger, and then one of them um, the same sized. Same size. I would make the shoulder uh, width for the padding much wider overall. Uh, absolutely. And then the biggest other change I would do is to lower the size of this top pocket um, fairly dramatically by at least I'd say five inches. Just don't need all of that space on the top. I guess maybe along with that change I might also lower the insertion point here for the top strap down even farther. So uh, those are the changes that I will be making for the next version of this pack. I think that um, I might make another version of this which will be an even um, shorter trip version and it will be for something like a four and a half to five inch depth um, to make it so that the volume is really pretty dang small. Uh, definitely fair weather sort of uh, backpacking. So overall, uh, this pack has been great. It continues to be my first shot for every single backpacking trip that I go on at this point still. So I love using this pack. Overall, like I said, it really is awesome. Uh, I just don't think that the light skin is uh, the um, end of the of the line when it comes to these materials. Again, you can see um, some uh, wear here just from walking. This isn't from it's it catching or anything like that. This is just from the natural use of this bag. So uh, I definitely will be when purchasing new materials using something different. Uh, but for now, it's it's okay. Um, I think people mostly just should should know that these are things that will happen to their light skin products um, and that if you are buying a light skin bag you should just be a little bit conscious that the durability won't be nearly as long as something like a Dyneema composite fiber um, or even potentially something like a hex grid stop, grid stop nylon. So uh, I think that there's plenty of room to continue to make improvements especially at uh, cheaper cheaper price points for myself, um, so I'll be continuing to experiment, but so far I, I've loved this pack um, and I continue to enjoy using it. Uh, I got out here last weekend in October and uh, this was a great pack to bring because I needed plenty of volume uh, for that trip. So definitely will make something very similar to this again, uh, but just make it wider uh, shoulder straps. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to subscribe. Don't publish anything but just kind of this sort of stuff so if you're nerding out with with me great uh feel free to hit me up on the comments as well to get in touch potentially and uh see you all next time